Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 48. And yes, I am going to do another insurance rant for you guys today. Seems like this is a trend because a lot of insurance companies keep giving us bad news and doing bad things. Um, and it's really like, is it bad for me? I don't know if it's bad for me. Is it bad for you? Yeah, it's bad for you. Um, let me explain. Last week, we got a letter from Amplifone. Now, Amplifone is a managed care company who basically handles all of the administration of the hearing aid benefits for Cigna and Aetna networks, the insurance network. So if you have Cigna insurance or Aetna insurance, this is not really gonna be good news for you over the course of this video. But basically we got this letter and I'll put it up here on the screen somewhere. Um, and basically what they're saying is that they're going to be reducing our rates, meaning the reimbursement rates that they actually pay us for fitting you with hearing devices. Now, they, basically said that for the highest level of technology, and, and I think that probably, at least in my clinic, the vast majority of individuals who come into my clinic end up wanting the best technology that's available. And so what Amplifone is telling us is that they're going to be cutting our reimbursement by 37.5% for those individuals. Basically meaning that uh, they're not going to pay us even close to the same amount of money that they would have paid us previously. And this is actually an additional reduction. Uh, and over the, since the point that I signed up with Amplifone three years ago, three and a half years ago when I started my clinic, it, we're down 50% in reimbursement from Amplifone. So basically today, we're getting paid half the, or sorry, not today. Um, this will actually start, I think it goes into effect like uh, January 1st or January 31st, something like that of 2021. But at some point, it's going to basically drop down by another 37.5%. But we're making literally 50% less with individuals who are being fit with uh, hearing aids through their Amplifone uh, insurance benefit than what we were three and a half years ago. And, uh, you know, in terms of inflation, the number should be at least staying stable, if not going up by a few percentage points each year, and that is not happening. So um, it's very, I mean, they're trying to justify it in the sense that, well, you know, they have a different tier system, right? So they have premium technology, second, third, fourth tier technology, and depending on which technology you select will dictate how much we get paid in the clinic, how much they pay us to perform the fitting and to provide you with care. And we're trying to provide you with the exact same level of care, but they keep reducing the amount that they pay us to give you that care. Um, so it's just a very weird situation, but their justification, because I digress, their justification is that, well, we'll pay you X amount of dollars whether you fit in with you know, premium, second tier, third tier, fourth tier, fifth tier, whatever, we'll pay you the exact same uh, amount. Um, and that sounds great, but they're gonna pay a certain amount if you fit one hearing aid and a certain, and then they double that if you fit two hearing aids. And they're trying to say that they think it's more fair based on our time, the amount of time that we spend is to just give a flat rate. So that way, if someone picks a really low level of technology, we're not basically fitting that for free. Um, the problem with that line of thinking is that if they were gonna pay us based in valuing us, the audiologist, based on our time, then what they would do is they would pay us the same amount no matter what level of technology, no matter if we fit one hearing aid or two hearing aids on an individual. So they're basically what they're doing is they're just trying to give some excuse to get us to swallow this massive rate reduction uh, of what they're gonna pay us to actually treat their members. Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy. Now, if you don't know how managed care works, because I had mentioned that Amplifone is actually a managed care company, is that they contract with, actually, I should say that the insurance companies contract with them to handle all of the hearing aid benefits. So if you're a Cigna plan member, um, chances are is that if you wanted to go somewhere and get hearing aids, you would have to go to an Amplifone provider so you could get either the discounted rate or utilize your insurance benefits with that provider because Amplifone is who administers all the hearing aid benefits for Cigna. And it's the exact same thing for Aetna. So if you have a Cigna plan or an Aetna plan, chances are is that um, the provider that you go see and get fit with hearing aids with in 
2021 is going to be paid significantly less than that what they were already getting paid the previous years. And it wasn't a ton in the previous years as well. Shoot, maybe this is good for you, right? So if reimbursement rates to the hearing care provider is lower, that means that you'll probably have like lower premiums or your deductible will get lowered. And I can tell you that there is no way that that's gonna happen. This is totally a cost cutting measure. Uh, the reason for justification seems to me to be ridiculous. Now, this is my opinion. I think it's ridiculous. Um, maybe there were a ton of, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it is worse for Amplifone. Maybe Maybe Amplifone loses money by doing this. I doubt it. But, um, you know, the situation becomes is that, you know, if your rates don't go down, our rates are uh, how much we get reimbursed is going down, which means that there's some extra money somewhere, most likely. And the question is, is who gets to pocket that money? Is it Cigna? Is it Aetna? Or is it Amplifone? I don't know the answer to that question. But let me know in the comment section if your insurance premiums and deductibles are going down in 2021 if you have a Cigna plan or an Aetna plan. I'm really interested to know because I have Blue Cross Blue Shield myself and I can tell you that my rates are not going down. Of course, at least Blue Cross Blue Shield um, that we can contract with directly so we don't have to abide by the, the whatever Amplifone decides that they want to do. Uh, we can actually negotiate with Blue Cross Blue Shield for the reimbursement rates. Uh, now, those aren't amazing either. I mean, we basically accept insurance plans so you, the consumer, you, the individual with hearing loss, can use your benefits. But at some point, it gets to this point where these insurance companies and these managed care companies, they reduce the reimbursement so much to the point where you're like barely hanging on, trying to decide, is it even making financial sense in the clinic to even stay on? It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So with this lower rate of reimbursement, what does this actually accomplish? Well, basically what it's accomplishing is we are leaving the network. We're completely removing ourselves from the Amplifone network. So starting January 1st, 2021, if you have Cigna or Aetna insurance uh, for hearing aids and you have to go to an Amplifone provider, you can't come to us anymore if you want to use your hearing aid benefit. What this means for you is a couple things. Number one is most likely you're going to have a lot of providers exit. And I've, I've actually talked to a number of providers at this point, so hearing care providers, and they're like, yeah, we got the same letter you did, Cliff, because uh, I, I basically said on social media, I'm like, what's, what's going on here with Amplifone? And there's a bunch of people saying, yep, we submitted our termination to them just like we did. Um, and so there's gonna be a lot less hearing care providers there to provide you with care. Um, so either your hearing care provider is going to leave the network or the only other recourse that a clinic has is to lower the quality of care. And I've talked about this over and over again. If your clinician is going to uphold a really high standard and follow best practices and spend the hours necessary to make sure that everything is done the right way, selecting the right hearing aids for you, fitting those hearing aids on you the appropriate way following best practices, and then providing you with really high quality follow-up care instead of the, oh, just come back when you need me type of care, those types of clinics, they're gonna have to reduce the quality of care that they're gonna give you if they're gonna stay in this insurance network. There's no way that you can end up making these numbers work and it's getting worse as the years go on. I started out being a part of a lot of different managed care groups when I first started my clinic and every single one of them got worse where it just didn't make sense. And, and there's, companies out, there's companies out there that are like doing like way more egregious stuff um, that I, I'm not going to name names, but there's some there's some tough ones out there uh, in terms of reimbursement for hearing care providers and quality of care for their members. So what is there left for you to do? I mean, at this point, we have a good number. I, I had Chris, my office manager, look at how many Aetna and Cigna members we had in our clinic. Uh, we've got a good amount. I mean, we've been treating and, and we've been providing the absolute highest level of care that we can with these individuals, even though that even as of three years ago, the amount of care that we give is probably more than what we're actually reimbursed. Like we, we just feel like we need to give the, the same quality of care to every patient who comes in the clinic. So whether you came in and you had, uh, you know, if you're a private pay, if you're someone you know, on Medicare, if you're someone who has Blue Cross Blue Shield, if you have Cigna, if you have Aetna, if you have any insurance plan, we're basically providing the same level of care to anybody or, or to everybody 
And when it gets to a point where the reimbursement rates are so low to where we're literally losing money by providing care to patients, we have to step out. That's just, that's the facts. Like we, we cannot continue to uh, be a part of that. It's just not right. It's not right for, it's not right for you. And it's not right for the individuals who are being tasked with providing that care and that service to, to make sure that someone who has hearing loss is being taken care of the right way. So what can you do? Well, I mean, you could call your insurance company and complain and be like, hey, what's the deal? Why are, is my hearing care provider not able to accept my insurance anymore? What's going on? Um, and of course, they'll give you some kind of BS answer. Sorry, pardon my French, but they're gonna give you a bogus answer saying like, oh, I don't know, you know, that's a decision that they have to make or whatever. Um, you know, you can complain. I mean, your rates are not gonna go down. I'll be shocked if someone says that, you know, if you had the same plan going into 2021, if your rates are going down because they're cutting uh, reimbursement to probably not just hearing care providers are probably cutting it to, to all different types of medical professionals. Um, it's just, I mean, you can call and complain. I don't really know if that's going to do anything. You, you could probably switch insurances. You could go and find an insurance uh, that actually has good hearing aid benefit that doesn't force you to go through managed care uh, to uh, someone who's in network with that managed care group uh, and go that route. And, you know, uh, the thing is, <laughs> here's the funny thing. When you have a hearing aid benefit with managed care, the insurance companies are basically paying this managed care company. And it is the job of all insurance for that matter to not pay out, right? It's their job. Like they wanna keep as much money inside of their company as possible and not pay it out. They make money when providers like myself stay enrolled in the program because then individuals who are signing up for insurance, they will pay more money to have a hearing aid benefit associated with it. But if that doesn't result in them actually paying out to the providers that are providing you the care, then what good is it? I, I'm really having a hard time with this insurance stuff. It is, it's blowing my mind. Um, and you know, the funny thing is, is that and, and I know this because I've been doing this for, for three and a half years now. Every time that we leave an insurance, we make more money. So, and I don't want to leave the insurances. I am willing to make less money by, letting you pr uh, by providing you with care, all right? That's the crazy thing is that every hearing care provider, if they are staying in network there's one of two reasons. Number one, they believe that it is their civic duty to provide you with care under your insurance benefit, or they are skimping on care so much to the point where they're, they can still make money because they see very little of you, but they can actually turn a profit in doing so. Like, those are the only two reasons. Like, you don't you'd be an in-network insurance provider if you're gonna try to make a ton of money. Like, it's just not how it works. And so only at the point where we're forced to leave because we're losing money on insurance is the point that we have to leave. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Um, we, I mean, I don't know how much longer we're gonna be in network with anybody. Unless, I mean, if they ended up changing the rates and, and going back up to the starting level where we were at three years ago, not even adjusting for inflation, we would rejoin and, and be a part of it. We would, you know, I just, I kind of have to apologize. Uh, if you are someone who has Aetna or Cigna, uh, you're just not gonna be able to get uh, hearing aids from, from our clinic. So I apologize for that. And um, I can't foresee this going in the other direction. I, I don't think that unless there's some kind of crazy mass exodus of hearing care providers uh, who are in network with Amplifone, I don't see Amplifone submitting or sending out a letter saying, hey, we made a mistake, we apologize, let's return things back to the way that they were. Uh, it's just, I don't think that's gonna happen. So it is what it is. But nonetheless, thanks for hanging in here and hanging out with my rant again on insurance. I'm sure you enjoyed it or you hated it. Either one, let me know. Give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. Leave a comment, let me know. I really wanna know 
what you feel about this, if, especially if you have Aetna or Cigna, how this makes you feel that basically, I believe, every provider who is a part of the program, because they're changing reimbursement entirely, uh, let me know if your hearing care provider is going to stay in network with them, because I'd be shocked if they are at this point. Um, but there will be a couple out there. You might have to travel a ways. You might have to go to someone who's going to skimp on your care incredibly. Um, but you, you'll at least maybe have some access to a hearing care provider through the Amplifone network. But let me know in the comments section below. I'm, I'm rambling on here, guys. I apologize for that. So let me just go ahead and stop it right now. Uh, as always, I'll see you next week.